Hi. 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 I'm gonna make this so that nobody <laughs> interrupts. I'm excited because this is the next one. Oh boy. This if is that happens, Make sure you can yes, yes, I think, yes. You have to you take a break down the resistance is cold. How do you take this out? Um, this can stay. Yeah. 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 And this, this is a bit hard for it. And then people are going to start okay. um, commenting. It is. Stuff. This is what people look at. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Hello everyone. I am, I'm so blessed right now to be <laughs> with three amazing women. <laughs> Only two of which you're going to see in the video. <laughs> Because one is filming, there's Rebecca. <laughs> and Rebecca and I did our Tantra practitioner training together last year with Lourdes Starshower and Kathleen Sanfuegas. And today I had the blessing of being invited to this Tantra, Tantra Fest. <laughs> Gathering. Table talk. Ta table, talk. Table, talk. <laughs> table talk. Tantra <laughs> table talk with the amazing Don Beck, who is over 17 years teaching Tantra all around the world, right? Yeah. Um, so amazing, from Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I'm also with Rhea Ward, mm -hmm. who is a sex educator. Did I get it right? And healer. So healer, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've just been soaking them up. I'm so excited. My whole body is just tingling right now. <sighs> so I, I asked them if they would share with us a few mm. things about Tantra because it's something that I'm so passionate about bringing the information of the gifts of Tantra which people think that Tantra is just about sex and there's such a taboo and I, I don't know if you're my friend recently and you've been hearing me talk I can't stop talking about it it's changed my life and I thought I was a spiritual person I thought I was a good physical therapist I thought I was a good you know facilitator for people and now that I can teach people about feeling on a deeper level, the energy that they are, and getting really in touch with their intuition, the divinity that we are, and so much more, I'm so excited about the service that I'm able to provide, a more whole way of working with people that doesn't just reduce them to a physical body or to an uh, energetic body even, because there's just so much more going on. So I would love to know, well, first and foremost, if you can share a little bit about yourself, mm -hmm. and then what does Tantra mean to you? Mm -hmm. Listen up, folks. That's beautiful, Michelle. So first of all, before I share about myself, I just want to offer an invitation to anyone who is Michelle's friend to really invite her to keep talking about Tantra because she doesn't want to stop and there's no reason why she should stop. And if you're one of her friends that is Get triggered. letting her know that you don't want her to talk about Tantra, you're really doing yourself and her and the world and, a the, universe, and the universe yeah. a disservice. And the universe. And the right, universe right, right. a disservice because this is what Tantra is is worthy of being talked about. What Tantra is, is not just about sex. Yes, there's a sexual component, but it's about everything. It's about how life weaves, it's about how love weaves, it's about how we connect our hearts and our spirit and our sexual centers to one another, and when we connect our sexual centers to our power and to being grounded and to our hearts and to our voice and to our consciousness and to our spirit, we are bringing in what this world really needs and really wants and really is deserving of and what each and every one of us is deserving of on our path of to life orgasmic, and love, right? to live orgasmically, yeah, live orgasmic. to live Not lovingly, no, but to live life orgastically, to orgasmically, to have every cell of our body to be alive and to be vibrant. That's what brings youthfulness, that's what brings love, that's what brings consciousness, that's what brings health and wholeness and joyfulness. So what Tantra is about for me is about everything. It's about the small, it's about the large, it's about the moments of connection. It's about our eyes, it's about being present, it's about really inviting ourselves to be deeply connected to our own bodies, to our own senses, to 
to life and love and joy and spirit and health and vibrancy. And as a woman, I want to live orgasmically every second of my life. Not just in the bedroom, not just when I'm making love. Yeah, I want my orgasms. Yeah, I want to have my pleasure and share pleasure with whom I'm making love with. But I want to make love to every moment. I want wow. to make love yeah. right here. I want to make love. Making love is not just sexual. Making love is watching a beautiful sunset or smelling a beautiful rose or seeing the parrots and the trees outside mm -hmm. and listening to their sounds and their songs. Mm. All of that is Tantra. And appreciating the sisterhood for me, yes. even with women, um, I feel I'm more affectionate with women and I don't have those hang-ups that I used to have about yeah. sexuality yeah. because I have had yoni massages by a woman and yeah. it's been so healing. Yes. So I even feel sisterhood is different for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have these judgments. Judgments or comparisons or competitiveness. There is so much competitiveness with women comparing, you know, what our hair looks like, how big our breasts are, how small our breasts are, what our yonis look like. Mm -hmm. Every woman has a flower. Every woman has a beautiful yoni. No matter what your yoni looks like. Our yonis are beautiful, and our yonis are a reflection of who we are as mm -hmm. women. And when we share when we share with honor, with consent, with love, and with appreciation, mm. our yonis through yoni massage, we're not only healing and awakening whomever we are giving yoni massage to, but we're healing and awakening ourselves mm -hmm. because we're all connected. So yeah. a woman that, because this is something that I feel, I was very tense down there in my yoni, in my mm -hmm. vagina. Mm -hmm. I had sexual trauma. I had a lot of guilt. I even had cervical pain, pain mm -hmm. in my cervical area mm -hmm. that later on I discovered was because I judged myself for not saying no in my first sexual experience. So I know what it's like to have a tight cervical, mm -hmm. tight down there, mm -hmm. tight yoni, mm -hmm. and how that limited me from experiencing joy, peace, mm -hmm. playfulness in my mm -hmm. body because I was walking around like right. tight ass, you know? Yeah, tight, tight yoni. Tight, tight yoni. <laughs> um, yeah. And today, I, I feel I'm this wild, free woman because I don't have this anchor pulling me down mm -hmm. at my root, mm -hmm. you know, at my deepest. So mm -hmm. can you share with us what the benefits are of yoni massage mm. or of a woman simply awakening more to releasing shame, releasing mm. the guilt, the programming mm -hmm. that I feel so many of us have, like even having casual sex or ca mm -hmm. having encounters sexually, mm -hmm. I always thought, I was programmed to think that I have to marry somebody if I'm going to be with them in any sexual way. Yeah. And what I learned with Tantra is that we can have transpersonal connection with someone where it's, it's only about sharing the divine energy of creation with someone. So looking yeah. at how any woman that's my friend is, t is listening or anyone out there, people talk about yoni massage, it's amazing, you know. So what are the benefits if you can share with us from also your experience? There are such multitudes of benefits in our yonis, which the word yoni is a Sanskrit word meaning meaning sacred space. So inside of our yonis, there are, there's cellular makeup that can store trauma, that can store past mm -hmm. experiences around those times when we've said yes or we've said nothing when we have wanted to say no. They store place, they store energy, this, this sacred, this tissue stores energy around the places where we haven't felt loved or we haven't felt pretty enough or good enough or abundant enough or sexy enough where we've compared ourselves to other women or where we've been compared to other women as well as storing sexual abuse, sexual trauma. So through yoni massage, through receiving conscious loving touch into this part of our bodies, into these cells, we start to create more spaciousness. We start to allow whatever trauma, whatever beliefs, whatever judgments, whatever ideas, whatever experiences that have happened in our lives that have gotten stuck in these tissues that doesn't serve us anymore. The experiences that no longer serves us, that holds us back 
from that freedom, from that joy, from that ease, from that celebration of being a woman, we start to bring more consciousness to this space and allow the emotions and the memories and the beliefs to bubble up. We don't have to analyze them, mm -hmm. but we can allow it's energy, it's energy it's right? So we don't have mm -hmm. to go through each experience, <sighs> each piece. We don't have to psychoanalyze it, but we give those experiences and those beliefs and those judgments and those memories a space to be felt, to hold a space for those experiences or those memories or those beliefs or those judgments to be felt so that we can give them voice mm. with the intention of I let that go. Moving it on. I don't, don't want to carry this around with anymore. I don't right. want to carry this around with me anymore. This no longer serves me. This story doesn't, this story doesn't me serve anymore. me. Yes, that was my old story. That was that was something that happened to me. So it's acknowledging that that's true. Right. It's not it's not saying denying. that didn't denying it or this didn't happen, but giving it voice at with the intention of I let this go so that I am creating more space for now. What do I want to bring in? Do I want to bring in more sexiness? Do I want to bring in more vitality? Do I want to bring in more love? Do I want to bring in more juiciness? Do I want to bring in more orgasmic pleasure? Do I want to open my heart? Do I want to bring in a beloved? Do I want to invite in a beloved? When that stuff is stored that doesn't serve us, there's no room for anything. And we're not even inspired to create anything no. because we're in that sympathetic. That's where the science that's comes right. in. That's it's really right. That's right. It's really hard to see. It's, it's that the fight. The sun's shining. Yes. There's all this gray covering yes. the window. Yes. Yeah. So we want to take away the gray. We want to bring in the light so that rainbows can come through. <laughs> not. So Tantra is like Windex. <laughs> Yoni massage. <laughs> yes. So yeah, and I'd like to hear from this beautiful lady sitting right here because she hasn't introduced herself yet. Yes. Thea. Hi. 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 It's so great to be here. Thank you for this. And Thea's in Florida, everyone. Rhea. 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 Oh boy. And it's Rhea is in Florida now. Mm. A ray of sunshine. A ray of sunshine. Mm. Thank you. Thank for you so much for sharing. Bringing mm. this energy together, and it's so great to meet you, Michelle, because. Soul Sisters. Yeah, yeah, just to be able to talk yeah. about women's wisdom and the empowerment of the body and what sexual healing can mean and how it really transforms us, mm -hmm. right? How it can transform the energy of fear or of being closed off or of even just not fitting in, not belonging. Mm -hmm. And that fear can bring what we don't want. It just recreates failure or what we don't want right. over and over That's and over. It's like that self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Well, if we're holding on in our vaginas memories of the past, which a lot, I don't know if this has happened to you, but I have to bring this up, How? pardon me for sharing. I have had this repeatedly with women that I'm doing the yoni massage where they say, oh my God, my father used to get mad at me because I would wear clothes that he felt was slutty to go out and they're 16 17 years old so women have been programmed to fear men because they only want sex from their fathers and that's in their vagina this is what i wanted to share because it's amazing how you're not just having your own beliefs but your parents beliefs are in there too oh, yeah. <laughs> and your faith can put on and beliefs yeah. and everything else your, your schooling your, and sure your, and your ex-partners and your and your all of your past experiences yeah. they conglomerate and and past life experiences yes. too yeah oh so yeah i'm mm -hmm. <laughs> talking about that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just speaking to the transformative healing of sexual energy being able to flow and you talked about the freedom mm -hmm. that's really what it is right the freedom to be able to be ourselves and to be fully in our body every day, mm -hmm. breathing and alive and pulling in energy all the way up and all the way down. And not being ashamed. Yeah. No shame. I mean, I masturbated when I was 37 years old. That was the first time I ever touched myself sexually when I was 37 because of my judgments about masturbation. I was sharing that and I'm not embarrassed to share because when I did make myself orgasm, I was like, this is amazing. Oh my God. Like, why haven't I done that? But it was great because that showed me how judgment blocked me from the past of enjoying myself 
by myself. Right. And, but I see, I didn't think that I had the right to pleasure myself. I thought that was my job for my husband. That's right. what I was programmed to believe that your vagina is not even yours. yours. Right. That's it's something that honest, you give that's, away. It's something that you share. It's something or that. Or it's a gift that comes with And if marriage. I touch it, right. then I'm dirty. Right. That's what I thought. That's right. why I never touched I mean, I was, her. I'm I sorry. Taught, I was taught, I was caught pleasuring myself when I was five mm -hmm. years old, six years old, seven years old. I wasn't giving up, but, <laughs> but, and I was, you know, I was told everything from I was going to hurt myself to I wouldn't be able to have children wow. to I had my Christmas presents taken away one year because I was caught pleasuring myself before going over to a family dinner where all the other kids had their Christmas presents, presents and I didn't have any presents. Oh, and so I remembered the, sh the shame around, I hated Christmas. Oh for most of my adult life because in that moment I remember looking around the room and mm -hmm. wondering who here knows why oh. I don't have any Christmas presents mm -hmm. and that shame lived in my cells, lived you in do. my yoni and through sacred spot massage, yoni massage, releasing some of that shame, I got to reclaim reflower this part of my life, you know we've all been deflowered as women, mm -hmm. some of us with pretty good experiences, some of us with not such good experience, mostly with not such good experience for a first time. And that's that we've been deflowered. And so yoni massage is like a reflowering of re our yonis. Mm -hmm. Repeddling. Resourcing. Resourcing. But Rhea, you know, I think it's interesting because <laughs> Rhea's work, which I was learning about briefly, was all about opening up that flower and blossoming the flower and can you tell us a little bit about that the work that you do with empowering women well the foundation and their of, sexuality right? of good communication honesty and transparency in relating humans to humans women to women women to men that building that foundation and being able to talk clearly about our desires mm -hmm. about what we really want about what is our 100 percent and being able to draw clear boundaries and be very conscious of what we're choosing or not choosing. Did our culture tell us to choose that? Mm -hmm. did, did our religion, our faith, mm -hmm. or our parents, or our mm -hmm. school, or our peers teach us some way that we cut ourselves off from our real desires? Sometimes we don't even know what we want. I mean, honestly, with my clients, I see that a lot where they're not even asking, what do I want? And even that question is scary. And I'm totally projecting too here <laughs> because that was really hard for me. Can you share a little bit about boundaries and what is a boundary um, for people that that word kind of gets thrown around because you're so yeah. much about that, Rhea? I think boundaries are about where, where do I begin and where does someone else end or how do we connect but know what our choices are within our own space. So getting to know our own bodies and getting to know who we are and what we want from honest and bare, clear communication mm -hmm. are some of the tools that we can bring to relating. And I guess more clarity and speaking what those boundaries are and then reinforcing them with so another So you really person. have to know yourself to have boundaries. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And ask and and know that when I say yes, that means yes, and when I say no, that means not right now. And can we can we talk about it? Can we negotiate mm -hmm. so that so that you can really trust There's my no yes when or I shaming say yes. or having right, a guilt or fault taking out taking out yeah. all that blame and, shame. and really just unpacking where that blame and shame comes from and creating boundaries. Creating boundaries also takes practice. Yes. You know, this isn't about having to be perfect. And we expect so much perfection from ourselves. We create this expectation, and the expectation is, is, is imposed upon us to, to be perfect, to have to know exactly the right thing to say at the right time, mm -hmm. rather than being given permission and allowing ourselves, giving ourselves the permission to practice, to have the spaciousness to say, I don't know. I'm not sure. Not I'm yet. Not yet. I'm not, I'm sure. not sure. Not yet. I I need to check in. I don't have you know in this culture where where 
we're get so all the answers right predetermined. Away. Yeah. It's it's we're, there's so much pressure to have to answer really quickly, to have to get to the next thing really quickly. Expectations is something that I've had to work. Yeah. Which I'm still working on. We um, all are we're, like we're I'm so programmed in the past. Practicing. This whole concept. So when we're relating in tantra, it's it's in the moment. Yes. There's no expectation because even having an erection when I'm doing the linga massage, mm -hmm. um, some clients say, uh, "Am I supposed to get hard?" Right. And it's so beautiful for a man to just be himself without performing or thinking he has to. Can we skip on over to what the benefits of a linga ma massage are for a man? <laughs> she wants it all. <laughs> well, that is a benefit to allow a man's linga, which is his wand of light, to really be able to be in whatever state of arousal he wants to be in. Or whatever shows up, or whatever shows up, that there that there is no pressure. I mean, when we're when I work with couples, you know, for a man to learn that he doesn't have to be hard, to be a lover, to be a beautiful mm -hmm. lover, to be an exquisite lover, to send energy from his heart down through his power center into his wand of light, into his beloved. He can have a soft on, he can have a medium on, he can have a hard on. Oh, he can beautiful. flow in and out of different states of arousal and there's so much pressure for, for a man to have to get hard and stay hard. And there's so much pressure for, for women and I'm talking about a, a relationship between a man and a woman. I'm talking about mm -hmm. a heterosexual relationship. This is, all of this is true and appropriate for same-sex relationships as well. Mm -hmm. But for a man's lover, whether it's a woman or a man, to feel like if that man isn't hard, then they are not a good lover. Right. You know, Do when you I first, one. yes, when I first mm -hmm. started learning about Tantra and sacred sexuality, and my, my beloved and I, Gerard and I, started practicing, if he wasn't hard, there was that conditioning that I thought, well, he's not turned on to me. I'm not a good lover. I'm not doing something right. You mean I'm not good you. enough. I'm not sexy enough. I've done something wrong. If he chose not to ejaculate, which is also a, a, a big part of Tantra and sacred sexuality, for a man to be in control and to have say so over his own ejaculation, whether he chooses to ejaculate or not ejaculate. And when I first started learning, how do we know we're done? If a man isn't ejaculating, how do we know when we're done? Well, we're, we're done, done when, when we're, we're hungry. <laughs> or when we need to get up or and pee. we and have to day. pee. To That's right. Or we, right. Or we want to watch sunset. Or we don't have to. The end of a lovemaking session doesn't have to be with a man's ejaculation. And there, that's more exciting, too, because then it's not this habitual routine right. that I think a lot of couples get caught in the so routine many. of yeah. sex. So many, yeah. And that it has to look a certain way. It has to start at A and go to Z. And that's why men think, I mean, women say, oh, you know, he wants variety, but he doesn't necessarily want variety of women. He maybe just wants variety of what is possible when we create in the sexual intimacy, romantic yes. interaction, that if more people did do Tantra, it would be more of a new experience every single time. Yeah. And maybe that would shift the whole divorce rate. You know, I mean, I'm thinking like, that's right. we need to teach all couples. That's tantra. right. Let's yes. explore. What is it like to just massage each other and not have a goal of, of having intercourse? We don't have to have, we don't have intercourse all the time. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. It does, you know, that, that doesn't define a lovemaking experience. Amen. That's beautiful. It doesn't have to define I'm so thankful to have this conversation right now because I think yeah. it's so valuable to talk about it right now. Mm -hmm. We need we need this level of healing. We need this level of transformation, not just for us individually, personally, as a culture, but on the planet. We yeah. need this transformation and, and the evolution. Shame, the it's shame time. of sexuality. Yeah. It is time. It's time yeah. to because I have to I have to say I, I feel I am super grateful that I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist, that I'm licensed to touch genitals, okay? And I, I feel very free to speak about this because I respect so much the sacredness of our sexuality. And I, and when I share how I'm working with men and women and helping them to heal their sexuality, sometimes people laugh. Sometimes people look at me like, 
I thought you were a healer. You know, what are you doing with the sex thing? Are they orgasming? Are they coming? And so my wish today was really to make it table talk conversation. Mm -hmm. And look, I manifested this amazing <laughs> leaders in the whole field. I mean, this just shows how powerful I am. I'm just going to like are. let my ego ride with this one. Yeah, you because I've been powerful. saying, God, help me to bring this out in a way where I'm not turning off people. And I know I'm intense. Um, and, and I feel today you shared so beautifully that I pray, you know, people comment. I'm going to put their websites. And mm -hmm. if you want to learn more about, you know, you offer retreats and workshops. Mm -hmm. So do you. Mm -hmm. And there's these two amazing women that are here that if you have questions about Tantra, I just started last year in November. Okay. And, and look at me like, I am like, ah! it's like so amazing. You are a Tantra powerhouse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel it's part of my calling to be a bridge because I love science. Yeah. I love sexual sacredness mm -hmm. and, love and spirituality and sex is so healing. And I know sex is healing because when I did start to masturbate, I would cry. And this was after my, I think it was a year after my divorce mm -hmm. that I actually did start touching myself. Um, and, and then I would cry and I would have these releases when I would be orgasming mm -hmm. by myself. And I, and I started to realize how this is so sacred. This is so sacred. And doing emotional release body work as a profession, I wasn't working with my client's genitals back then. Mm -hmm. um, but now I feel that if everybody could have a yoni massage, right away you know like if you're having problems yeah. with anything physically in your pelvis yeah. if that would be a possibility then maybe you wouldn't have to go to the acupuncturist mm -hmm. for three months mm -hmm. or you wouldn't have to go to the physical therapist for three months yeah. one yoni massage can release pain that you've been holding for years or you wouldn't develop pelvic problems or yeah or painful intercourse yeah. or you know all the other and and cancer. disease or cancer, cancer. Any of right. I mean, all the when, when we fibro hold fibro yeah fibros fibros and, fibros and I mean, immune system disorders all of it it's all, all it. connected it's all this connected. is a body system yeah. sex is yeah. so healing yes That's, and yes. our sexual centers are are the core of our they're they're one of the cores of our bodies and so when, when disease is there and unhealthiness is there, it radiates out into yeah. other parts of our body. And we you know, I, I thoroughly believe in, in um, physical ther therapy and psychotherapy and acupuncture mm -hmm. and chiropractic and Western medicine and Eastern medicine and herbal therapy and homeopathic. I mean, I believe that all combined we can heal ourselves and this is just as important of an element sexual healing and awakening is just as important of a medicine as any other medicine is mm -hmm. and if, if not the most important and it's part of the whole and yeah. taking well care i mean I, I i have to say something here i mean i was trained as a physical therapist mm -hmm. so i'm on that i know what i learned mm -hmm. and what i'm you know i'm a little bit I guess I'm a little resentful towards myself because I didn't listen enough to how the emotional body affects the physical body. Mm -hmm. And so I'm turning my frustrations into an opportunity mm -hmm. because I do have clients that have been going to all these practitioners mm -hmm. for a couple months and they're just not making the leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. And then they come to me and they learn how to release themselves through this work. In one session, they clear their pain, nine out of 10 pain to zero in one session. And then they start to cry because they say, where have you been? I've been having this pain for 10 years. So that's where I'm coming from, where mm -hmm. we have to do better than what we've been offering. Because for somebody to be in pain for 10 years, 10 years, yeah. see, I get emotional. Yeah. That person could have learned how to help themselves. So anyway, that's where I need to just yep. keep doing what I'm doing. You are doing what you're um, doing. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> and acupuncture, sexual, physical therapy, yes. chiropractic, it's all wonderful. Yes, yes. And, 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 and sexual <laughs> healing and awakening is one of the fastest, that's what I'm one of the fastest routes to whole body healing. I mean, that's yep. what I've experienced. I've experienced in my own body and I've experienced 
with other people. For how many years? I mean, you've been doing this wellness. You've Seven, been on the wellness, 17 years. But even before that. Even before that. Yes. Eons before yes. that. Yes. And yes. lifetimes before yes. that. Right. <laughs> and look at how healthy and radiant these goddesses are. You're amazing. <laughs> amazing. So beautiful and vibrant. We're, we're in our 80s. We're vibrant. <laughs> We're older than this beautiful goddess, but <laughs> just so, more time on the planet. That's right. <laughs> so is there any one or two gems that you'd like women to know that are listening or men that is super healing, super powerful message that you want to close with? I want to talk about that word dis-ease, that disease comes from the, the lack of ease and that in sexual empowerment and in being able to be embodied and at one with our yoni and at one with all of the energies up and down, we can feel more ease and more freedom and everything starts to move. That's, that's my own experience in my own body and I believe we all have that mm -hmm. ability yeah. to feel the ease and the flow and then energies start to move mm -hmm. and things start to happen and we start to create our own desires, start to create what we really want and what we deserve, mm -hmm. and what we've been longing for for so, so long. So yeah, thank you for beautiful. giving me this opportunity. Thank you, yeah. Beautiful. Thank yeah. You. My pleasure. And I want to talk about aging. You know, I made a joke about we're in our 80s, and, you know, we're not, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm 58, and, you know, I look at my body every day, and, yeah, I notice the differences of when I was 38 versus 58. And so I really want to put out an invitation to women who are who are aging you know women in your 50s in your 60s in your 70s in your 80s who are who are contracting around aging rather than expanding around aging with age comes wisdom yes with age comes compassion can mm -hmm. come yes. compassion wisdom sexual freedom enjoyment around sexuality yes. that I didn't know how to experience in my 20s and 30s mm -hmm. and even 40s and to have an invitation for for women coming together and yeah. and being willing to to shed our clothes to shed our constrictions mm -hmm. around you know my breasts aren't as perky as they used to be and my yoni isn't as tight as it used to be and so fucking what is what I say it's like yeah, yeah let's enjoy our healthy breasts let's enjoy yes. our healthy bodies let's enjoy our yonis because there's so much surgery elective surgery oh, being done right yes. now to tighten our yoni lips to tighten our labias to, to uplift our breasts to mm -hmm. uplift our butts and you know if that's what you choose to do that's what you choose to do I'm you know I'm, I'm not being I'm not trying to be judgmental but what I want to create some more communication and um, awareness around is that we are beautiful yeah. as we age and to really acknowledge that for ourselves and to really invite the men in our lives to be more educated around around acknowledging that for us around really celebrating yes. themselves aging and celebrate us aging and find the natural beauty in that because there is so much natural beauty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So much beauty right now, right yeah. here. Yeah. So much beauty, so much and beauty. I mean, as as you were talking, Rhea, about this movement of the energy and how you know you you're grateful to have people expand that awareness. I couldn't help but being reminded of whole body orgasm mm -hmm. and how nature created it so that our whole body can orgasm, and that's a massage that we're giving to ourselves mm -hmm. and it's free and <laughs> it also secretes a lot of oxytocin mm -hmm. so this is a way of having your coffee your morning run you know you're you're getting all those functional and things <laughs> and your meditation and all in one <laughs> <laughs> and i'm talking about the whole body orgasm not just right. orgasm in yes, your clitoris that's right. yeah. orgasms everywhere in our body and that creates youthfulness and energy mm -hmm. and liveliness and healthfulness mm -hmm. and creativity opening and to abundance yes, it's, it's our magic it's right? our creative yes. it's our creative center our sexual totally centers is. are our creative centers so we get to create abundance I think it's and worthiness it's the it generative organism it is the, the it's generative everything. organism 
organ is what creates the energy for life. Yeah. The only reason we're alive is because we came through a vulva, a yoni, a vagina. That's right. And the power is in that organ and in being connected to it, healthy through it, with it, in it, and loving it and allowing it to be loved. Mm. Yeah. Right? Oh my and God. receiving all of. <laughs> I'm so yeah, grateful in my lifetime. That. I'm yes. so grateful because I never even touched her till I was 37 fucking years old. Yeah. Seriously, folks. You yeah. know, it's like a whole yeah, part of okay. me. I know. Yeah. This is, I'm, I'm having a healing you're, you're, gasm you're right now. now. <laughs> and you connected with us for a reason. Yes. And, and, reason. and that's the part where the laughing, you know, like I don't want to laugh at my vagina. I, I love my vagina. Yeah. I'm 44 years old, and as I'm watching you goddesses, I feel even younger than 44 mm. because coming back, I just came back from Tantra Week two weeks ago, and it is such a powerful natural drug, yes. oxytocin, yes. the love hormone, and the intimacy that we have with ourselves when we open ourselves to being open to mm. our natural bodies. It really is such a sacred beautiful feeling that is birthed that honestly I never knew that I could feel that enriched mm -hmm. through this right through from my waist down part mm -hmm. you know it and really is total flip yeah. flip of my life yeah. it's and that's just why like you're wow connected and you're making all these connections now and meeting people and things are happening and everything's coming together and clicking and clicking and clicking yeah. it's beautiful clickety click yeah. <laughs> 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 So thank you so much. People, mm -hmm. reach out. I'm going to post their websites, their information. And mm -hmm. if you're in South Florida, come see me for anything related to Tantra, mm -hmm. healing, release work. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Aww, thank you. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> <laughs>